Hey travelers, Mag, I, and Bumblebee here on day 257 of our trip around the United States. Today is supposed to be an admin day on the schedule and we could really use a proper admin day. However, that was not meant to be. While we were playing around in Texas, Tattoo Barbie contacted us and offered to host an event for us, which we were very grateful to jump on the opportunity for. That means we've taken our admin day that's supposed to be today and essentially split it in half. We'll be covering some of that route today and some of that route tomorrow. And whatever free time we have in the middle, we'll go ahead and use to knock out those administrative tasks. Today's route combined with tomorrow has us covering 290 miles as we make our way east out of the state. We're starting here in Stillwater where we're not only gonna to get to see Bumblebee, but go a little further into town to meet Optimus Prime as well. From there, we're gonna pop up north to Perry and then begin our steady trek east for the day and bringing things to an end at the event in Collinsville. We've got a few virtuals on the list. We've got a few challenges. We've got a few highly favorited geocaches. I think today offers us a lot of potential, but either way, we need to make sure that we are running on a good time because ahead of that event, iChan has a vet appointment that we have to do and then the event itself. So time will dictate what we can actually do today as we shed targets or add things to make sure that we're finishing just where we need to be at the right place and the right time. So let's get out there and see what interesting things and great geocaches today has in store. Come on, let's go. Our day begins in Stillwater, the county seat of Payne County with a population of just shy of 50,000 people. This city, too, was born from the land run of 1889 and became the core of the new Oklahoma Territory. By the end of the first day, 240 acres had been claimed and designated as the Stillwater Township, with nearly 300 people living in tents out on the prairie by the time the sun set. Although we did not spend too long exploring the town, we could not resist coming by to see Bumblebee and Optimus Prime. These 20-foot tall transformers, one at the east entrance and one at the west entrance, make this the only city in America protected by the transformers. A little further north, just on the outskirts of Perry, we drop in to visit the Cherokee Strip Museum and Rose Hill School. The museum complex is dedicated to collecting, preserving, and interpreting the history of the Cherokee. Sitting on a beautiful five acres of land, the complex includes four buildings, a museum, a blacksmith, an implement building, and a one-room schoolhouse. We took a very brief walk around between the buildings and then jumped into our geocaching for the day. The name of the game today is Time Management. With both a vet's appointment for Aichan coming up and an event this evening, we know we have places to be at certain times. We cut all of our time-consuming targets and the ones that would have us hiking out on the trails, leaving us with many of the micros scattered throughout the small towns we would be passing today. Our chosen path meandered us through a series of cemeteries, back alleys, small towns, and busy highways. Aichan got out to stretch her legs and help me look when she felt like it, and held her seat firmly and gave me moral support from the sidelines when she didn't. Fortunately, the choices that we made in the interest of time all seemed to work out pretty well and we were able to qualify in the counties and the pages that we need as we steadily trekked toward Collinsville from Stillwater. By the early afternoon, our trail of finds had led us into Ponga City with a population of about 25,000 people. Ponga City sprang to life in 1893 as New Ponga after the U.S. opened the Cherokee outlet for European-American settlement during the Cherokee Strip land run. The city is named in honor of the Ponga tribe, a large portion of which was relocated from Nebraska to northern Oklahoma between 1877 and 1880. During this period, nearly a third of their numbers died from illness and exposure. In 1879, Standing Bear's oldest son passed away, and he attempted to leave the reservation to bury him back in his homeland. For the supposed crime of leaving the reservation, he was arrested by the U.S. Army and filed a writ of habeas corpus challenging the legality of it. 
The ruling in his case, Standing Bear versus Crook, would ultimately become a landmark decision in the U.S. District Courts, with the judge ruling that Native Americans have the same legal right as any other U.S. citizen. One thing I try to remember to do when visiting places like Ponga City is to pull up the Adventure Labs and see what kind of options are available. The Adventure Labs are not as high of a priority for me because they do not count based on location. However, sometimes they feature specifically statues, murals, or other points of interest that I already want to see when touring the area. In this case, we discovered a lab called the Alley Art of Ponga, and I knew immediately that we would be exploring all of the alleys of the city to run this one to ground. With our time on the clock run down for the day, we slide across the finish line into Collinsville to meet up with some local geocachers for a dinner at Tres Hermanos Mexican Restaurant. This presents the perfect opportunity to explore this quaint little town with about 5,000 residents. Like so many other cities in the area, it saw its beginnings with the Oklahoma Land Run and was named after Dr. Collins, who established the first post office. Interestingly, this city has taken the former American Legion in VFW, which was built in 1946, and refurbished it as a community center. Located directly across the street from our event site for the night, this restored building now features a war memorial directly outside with a World War II Marine standing guard over the battle cross. This is a rather intimate geocaching event with only a handful of attendees, which means that we get a chance to meet everybody who came out here today to meet Aichan you know, and me since I'm with her. DMZL Stone and I have met before. When we flew into Alaska with inextricable fate, we met up with some locals on that very first night and went out in the woods at about midnight and started tr climbing trees because of course that's what you do at midnight in Alaska. Why not, right? It's daylight. DMZ L Stone, how long have you been geocaching? Started in 2006. 2006. How many have you found in that time? A little over 6,800. 6,800 caches. And that, that's saying something because you've been living up until now in Alaska, correct? Yeah, up until a year ago. And Alaska is not the place where you're going to run out and go get a bunch of numbers. Yeah. Every find is significant. Yeah. Once you go off that trail a few feet, it becomes wild territory. You part of the <laughs> what is it that brings you to the game? What do you love about geocaching? It gets me out of the house and off the couch. Yeah, and that still holds true today, right? Oh, absolutely. What was you, one of your favorite geocache experiences in Alaska? Mm, probably, uh, completing the Alaska Dwarme Challenge, the South Central Dwarme Challenge, and then the Alaska Pearls and Census Challenge. Both are big and huge challenges. And there are only single digit finders on both of those challenges. Correct. So we are talking to somebody who has done the unthinkable, and one day I hope to follow in his footsteps. Oh, please. The uh, Pearl and Census Challenge, I was the second to complete it. And the last one to complete it. And, uh, South Central Dwarme, I'm the only one to complete it. And there we go, geocaching legend in our midst. <laughs> we love getting to meet new cachers. And when I say new cachers, I mean brand new geocachers. You started geocaching two months ago, right? Yes. How many have you found in those two months? 60. 60 geocaches in those two months. And what is it that draws you to this game and gets you out there to keep finding these caches? Uh, getting outside and actually finding the caches. What is one of the more interesting caches you found as you start out as a Grat 5? One of the interesting caches that I found is one that was based on the Outsiders movie and you had to put in a combination to open a lock box. And those gadget geocaches never stop being fun, whether you found 60, 600, or 6,000. There's still more to be found out there. And I hope that in five, 10 years, you were still out there finding new locations and having fun geocaching. Tattoo Garby was nice enough to host this event for us. She is friends with two crazy chicks out of Texas and they were very gracious hosts when we were there and having just come from Texas, she still has all that Texas friendly spirit and was just as gracious. How long have you been geocaching? Since 2010. 2010, which is the year I started as well. Oh. How many have you found in that time? Oh, over 23,000. 23,000. And what was one of your favorite geocaching memories? 
You know, I think one of the biggest thrills I had, I mean, there's been so many awesome geocaches, but one of my biggest thrills was getting that last county in Texas. And she has finished two states and her very first state completed was Texas. So if you're gonna start anywhere, you might as well start with the biggest beast to tackle, right? Right. Love the it. rest will be easy. <laughs> All downhill from there. Thank you for hosting and having us out here tonight. Thank you for coming. All right, and it looks like that is going to do it for our day. Aichan and I have had a rather productive admin day out here geocaching pretty much all day long. But tomorrow, we're gonna to be finishing what's left of our route and actually get to some of those administrative tasks that we didn't put off today. We had a great event here to wrap up our day with a dinner hosted by Tattoo Bargain. Thank you very much for bringing us together tonight. It is always a pleasure to meet local geocachers, including our event host, a longtime friend that I haven't seen since Alaska, and some new geocachers who are hoping to get out there and really make some finds for the game. Thank you guys for joining us as we continue to tour our way east through Oklahoma. We have one more day ahead of us and then it is on to Missouri from there. Like this video, subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails. <laughs>